Thanks for taking a few minutes to watch this update on government activities during the second quarter of 2012. As a BC resident, it's important that you know what your government has been doing to improve the lives of families all across our province so that you can help us build an even greater future for BC. Our government has a plan. It's focused on two key priorities, jobs and families. And today I'd like to talk to you about both, but especially about what we're doing to make life more affordable for families across BC. I believe the best way we can make life more affordable is by creating good jobs that allow families to plan for the future. A big part of our jobs plan is opening up new markets for BC goods. So we're focused on making sure that trade with Asian markets is a number one priority where we're capitalizing on our geography, our diversity and helping build bridges that will lead to opportunities for BC. So I embarked on my second jobs and trade mission in May. This time, Korea, Japan and the Philippines were on the agenda. As the largest importers of natural gas in the world, reaching out to Asian markets is incredibly important to the future of BC's natural gas industry. Natural gas truly is the opportunity of our lifetime. So I was happy to hear on our trade mission that Mitsubishi, along with Shell, Kogas and PetroChina, will be developing two natural gas processing plants in Kitimat. This fall, we'll be making new announcements to support the BC Jobs Plan with a particular focus on skills training. Beyond creating jobs for families, we've also been working on other initiatives to make life more affordable. Part of that has meant keeping government spending under control so that we can keep taxes low for you. Since 2001, provincial personal income taxes for most taxpayers have been reduced by 37%. More than 1 million British Columbians no longer pay any BC income tax at all. One of the things I'm most proud of is increasing the minimum wage. It went up again in May and now it is 10.25 an hour. In our budget this year, we also created new tax credits, ones that are giving families a leg up. One example is the BC Seniors Home Renovation Tax Credit. This is up to $1,000 per year in the tax credit that came into effect in April and it's designed to help senior citizens or their families make renovations which will allow them to continue living at home safely or to make renovations which will allow them to move in with family members. Our children's fitness and arts tax credit is now also available to families across BC. Up to $500 per year for each child to help cover the costs of getting your child involved in an active and creative lifestyle. Another great example, our first time new home buyers bonus, worth up to $10,000 and available to British Columbians buying their first new or significantly renovated home. We also introduced changes to help British Columbians with student loans. On July 1st, a new two-stage plan came into effect to ensure that people with a lower income and their families have the support they need when repaying their student loans. This new repayment assistance plan is based on the borrower's ability to pay. And we're doing this because this common sense approach offers more flexibility, particularly around the income threshold. What's also different is that the program will actually forgive a portion of a borrower's debt. And for some people that could actually be all of their debt. We expect that this new plan will provide support for up to 20,000 people every year. We're also helping families avoid the cycle of income assistance dependency by extending work search requirements for new applicants from three weeks to five weeks, while enhancing employment planning to support people transitioning off income assistance and trying to get back into the workforce. We've also introduced many other measures to improve the quality of life for families across BC. One that I'm particularly proud of is our smoking cessation program. I am a former smoker and I know how hard it can be to quit. That's why this program is available to help British Columbians deal with the costs of smoking cessation products. Since September last year, over 130,000 orders have been placed through the program. And I hope that if you are still smoking, you'll consider joining in. 
Your government is also focused on making our communities safer and more secure. We're implementing a new strategy to eliminate bullying in schools. We call it Erase Bullying. This plan focuses on prevention and intervention and will deliver specialized training to over 15,000 educators and community partners in all of BC's school districts. It's backed by strong community partnerships to help prevent, identify and stop harmful behaviours in schools. You can find out more about how we are making family life more affordable, supporting vulnerable families and making our communities more secure with the BC Plan for Families at www.familiesfirstbc.ca. Finally, I'd like to talk about an issue that's been the topic of much discussion recently. That's Enbridge's Northern Gateway heavy oil pipeline. First off, let me say that I understand that this is a big opportunity economically for Canada. But this heavy oil pipeline also represents a big risk for BC's environment. And it doesn't offer us the significant economic benefits or jobs that British Columbians expect. In the event of an oil spill, we would take the majority of the risk on our land base and all of the risk on our coast. And when you compare that against the limited economic benefits, I think most would agree that the risks far outweigh the rewards for BC. That's why we've laid out five basic bottom lines that must be met before we'll even consider allowing the project to go ahead. First, successful completion of the environmental review process. Second, world-class marine oil spill response prevention and recovery systems. Third, world-class land-based oil spill prevention, response and recovery. Fourth, Aboriginal and treaty rights have to be addressed and First Nations must be provided with the opportunities they need to share in the pipeline's benefits. And finally, British Columbia must receive our fair share of the economic benefits of this pipeline and those benefits must reflect the level of risk that we are taking in our province. We are a fair and reasonable province, and we want to see our neighbours and our country thrive. But first and foremost, it's my job to look out for BC's interests. Thanks for taking the time to watch this report. I hope you can join me on Facebook or follow me on Twitter. I look forward to hearing from you.